I'm getting mixed up with these Bible names, first of all. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Normally I would not, normally I would not do this episode because frankly, it's a filler episode. And um, what, what need do we have of a filler episode when the season is over? I mean, we know what they're doing now. They're continuing on with their miserable lives. I could probably end the video here, but I won't. Anyway, let's get right into this recap. I know your names are on here, but who are y'all? Apparently these two women, Sarah Colonna and Mary Rosinski, I hope I'm saying your name right. You guys have a podcast that I wouldn't listen to if my ears were literally on fire and the only way to put out the fire was to listen to your podcast i'm very sorry but i wouldn't do it i just wouldn't have ears i'm really sorry to tell you i'm sorry I i'm sorry i'm not trying to be mean this is mary and that person over there is sarah so now they're talking about the fact that married at first sight had its first runaway love like a train on broken tracks my i'm really sorry i'm sidetracked this was the first season that had a runaway bride and who more appropriate to handle that runaway bride than Michael? Y'all, Lifetime people, y'all should just let him go home. Sarah was saying that the both of them were very judgmental about the crown thing. And you know, I'm not gonna lie. I was at first too, okay? I was at first too. But then I realized because I, I rewind this show a million times to give you guys the most accurate recap I can give you. I realized in the show, that same day actually, that the bride or the runaway bride is the one that bought the crown from Michael and presented it to him in the form of a wedding gift. You guys are just realizing that? You guys just realized that this episode where you're doing the recap or is this something you knew already? Cause y'all, it's coming off like you just learned this and you got a podcast? I'm gonna need you to do a little more research. I mean, we're recapping stuff that's literally, you can rewind it several times. So then Mary says, she was the crown monster talking about the mystery bride. And that's the best thing you could come up with, Mary, a crown monster. Y'all need to retire. I mean, can you retire from podcasting? I don't know, but y'all need to. So now they're talking about the runaway bride and speculations on who she was was all over social media and this is supposed to be a recap of a recap and she is a very insignificant really sorry ma'am but she's a very insignificant part of this show she was only there for like the first episode or whatever second episode i don't know and why are you even wasting time my recap talking about her first of all ma'am whoever you are you can see this video you did good you dodged the bullet to tell you and um other than that let's move on so we're really going to be bouncing all around town like winnie the pooh over here <laughs> who was <laughs> who was it on winnie the pooh that was bouncing around was it piglet i forgot that would be tigger <laughs> it was tigger that was bouncing all over the place well very much like tigger this entire episode is going to be mary and sarah bouncing all over the damn place with clips from different areas of the show why am I doing this recap? I'm getting mixed up with these Bible names, first of all. Okay, Mary and Sarah. These ladies with these Bible names. These, oh, oh, man. Don't get me started. So, Mary, was this one of your favorite parts when Becca met Austin's parents? Sure it was, lady. I'm ready to move on. Now they're talking about the conversation with Orion and Lauren and how sex was off the table because Lauren revealed that she had recently had sex only two months prior to being chosen for the experiment. And and this is Sarah's feelings on how she felt when she heard that conversation. Made me want to rip my hair out, slam my fingers in a window, no and then mail my fingers to Orion <laughs> to let him know so how upset stupid. I was with him. This goes to show you when you have people who, yes, y'all are used to radio, y'all are not used to TV. Maybe the both of you are nervous, I don't know. But was that supposed to be funny? Was that supposed to be clever? Sarah, after that clip that they played of Orion saying that sex is off the table, she's saying to us that in the clip, you know, Orion was saying, I don't just, basically, I don't just hand myself out. You know, I did the recaps, you guys can go rewatch the recaps, okay? But she was like, we don't slut shame here. And Mary was saying that it was uh, very annoying and frustrating for Lauren because, you know, as you all know, Orion is a freaking flip flopper and he flip flopped through this entire season. And I, I would have flopped his ass out. I would have never let him flip and flop back out in my damn life. Sarah says to Mary that I know it made you uncomfortable hearing about them being very graphic about what they would do actually say. 
You get me? You get me? Because I, I realize like when I say the wrong things on YouTube, they be they don't be pushing my channel. They don't be pushing my video. So yeah, I really got to watch what the certain words that I say on here. Ridiculous. But Mary admits that that conversation made her uncomfortable. And at first I was going to say, Lifetime, why you why you brought these prudes in front of my face? But then I thought about it and I also felt very uncomfortable. I don't want to hear, let me lick you up and down to you say stop. Should I have a singing channel? Put it in the comment section. Okay. And I can only sing like a minute of the song. So don't get happy. <laughs> Literally, I can only sing like a minute or so of the song. But unless I change, you know, how it sounds. That was gross. I never want to hear that again. And when Mary says... I would rather chew glass than honestly ever hear that or watch that scene again. I 100% agree with you. I'd rather chew glass. And with that, let's move on. After the break, apparently, I don't know why Prime isn't showing me ads. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. After the break, we're going to get into the fact that Orion and Lauren are now kaput. They didn't even make it off the honeymoon. As we know, Orion and Lauren were the first couple to call it quits in Denver. Actually, stop saying they were the first couple to call it quits. Lauren didn't call it quits. Orion did. So Mary says that she hated, why am I over here when Mary's over here talking? Maybe I should move myself. Don't want to confuse you guys, but I'm in the way. Mary says that they should have called time of death on the honeymoon. And girl, I agree with a lot of what you say. So Mary says watching Lauren deal with Orion's waffling is the word she used, waffling back and forth, was hard to watch. It was hard to watch because Lauren should have just left that fool alone and stopped giving him the benefit of the doubt. And I will not sing that Pebbles song as much as I want to sing it. And I want to sing it. I've sung enough in this review. Okay. I've sung enough in this review. I'm sorry, but these women are so incredibly corny with their corny inside jokes. Let's just move on, please. So obviously this show is hella scripted. Sorry for the word hella, but obviously this show is super scripted, even though they're just doing a recap because this is not their favorite part. I hated this part of the show. I thought it was stupid. The girls had good intentions and for some reason, Brennan was able to keep his composure and that's what Mary and Sarah talked about. But I thought this was awful. This made me very uncomfortable, actually. I thought they were doing a little too much. That's That was my opinion then, and that is still my opinion right now. Mary says she found Cameron to be very entertaining. Okay, Mary. I found Cameron very ghastly and annoying, but you're entitled to your opinion, lady. This is one of the first times you learned something on Married at First Sight. You believed that hogwash that Cameron told Claire about his grandmother being a lieutenant? Well, anyway and cue the clips of Cameron telling this stupid story that didn't make any sense over breakfast with Claire. If y'all believed any of this freaking story, you're dumb as hell. I'm really, really sorry to tell you. And Claire's facial expression, as Sarah and Mary was talking about, was dead behind the eyes because she probably could sense that he was lying too. And um, if he's telling the truth, I would be completely surprised. And uh, something funny that Mary and Sarah did say was that Claire was dead behind the eyes the way she is anytime Cameron talks about bikes and anything about him. <laughs> that was funny. Now we jump into that little minor quote argument. It really wasn't an argument. Emily was joking around saying, you don't know how to have fun. And Brennan got very, very serious. And that is really when I noticed Brennan completely switch on Emily. So I don't know if it had anything to do with this. I still don't know what it was that triggered everything. Even after this um, reunion thing, I still am confused and I'm probably always going to be confused. Sarah says in that clip, Brennan was saying to Emily, you'll know when I'm mad. And Sarah's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I can tell when you're mad, you're mad. Mary says she wishes that the experts would have did a little more, you know, got up, got up in there. And um, I do as well, because I know y'all saw that. Why didn't y'all address that at all? So Sarah says that Dr. Pia, because, you know, Brennan was acting a straight up fool in his meetings with her, trying to control the entire session. Sarah says that Dr. Pia should have had Brennan in a headlock. Okay, a headlock, I would say a sleeper hole, but then maybe I'm violent. Maybe I'm more violent than I should be. And now we're back to Michael. And can you two, can the two of you, I almost bit my damn tongue. 
Can the two of you please stop saying maths? It sounds terrible. Okay, show clips of Dr. Pepper um, asking Michael if, he's, if he would be willing to do the wedding thing again. Mary was saying how awkward it had to be for Dr. Pepper to come back to Michael like, hey, remember the big thing you did? Yeah, you got to do it again. So now we are here. And again, Michael went forward with this second wedding and uh, we meet Chloe. And Sarah talks about how Chloe wasn't the first choice and how she took that news well. Well, how else is she supposed to take it? At this point, she's already married. It's not like she can go get an annulment. Well, then again, could she get an annulment minutes after? I guess. I don't know. Here they go again saying maths. I wish they would stop doing that. That's an internet thing. We only do that on online. We only do that on Twitter. Okay, stop it. Um, Sarah was saying that's a first where, hey, you're the second choice. You're not the first choice. And I hope it never happens again, okay? This season makes me not want to watch the next season. I'm just telling you guys. I'm just saying. So Sarah mentions in this next bounce, bounce on, the, I won't do it. I won't do it. I want to though, because I like that song. Anyway, I said I won't do it. So I'm looking very orange and I don't like it. So should I fix myself or, because the lighting changed a little bit and this got me looking a tad orange. Is that better? Is that better, everybody? I think it is. Because I was looking orange. Chow, might want to squeeze me, might get some juice. I'm just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> so so then we bounce into this, uh, the fact that it was mentioned several times that this was Emily's first relationship and that, you know, don't want to judge people, you know, by their cover. The book might be good. You just don't know. And Emily turned out to be um, somebody that was actually invested in the marriage. So they talk about Emily being a trooper. First, she had a hurt wrist and she went out there on that water doing that little water sport. Then her hair got matted up in that hair weave. So Mary says, even though she's demure from earlier, she's demure and she's so closed off. She's flipping tables if you got to do an emergency haircut on her at vacation time. And of course, they talk about Emily's accident which they say was the scariest thing that they've ever seen on this show. And me as well. Obviously, there was a lot of firsts in this season. It was also the first season that totally sucked. Mary, you're making a crazy face here. But Mary here is talking about one thing that made her heated was Austin gearing up for this uh, couple's retreat and how he was gassing, gassing literally, like putting gas. He thought yeah, he was putting gas in Becca like he was going to drive her around town. Sexually. Okay, actually, actually, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> but you know what I mean. If I say actually, you, you know what I mean, right? Put an S in front of it. But um, yeah, she said that's what made him made her mad is that he was basically leading her on. And then when they got there, this man wanted to sleep in another man's room just because he was a celebrity. I'm not going to say that's gay, but it is weird. Now we're showing clips of the experts talking to Austin about his little escapade, his solo escapade in that bedroom. And now we're talking about the revelation of Brennan that this entire time he thought she was a negative person and that's why he was turned off from her. So <laughs> Sarah says after Brennan told her something like that, she would have changed the locks and changed her phone number and her name. <laughs> Child, that's funny because I wouldn't, go as far as to say I would change my name, but I'm definitely blocking you on my phone and I'm definitely, uh, we're leaving the show. I'm leaving the show. You might, you can stay if you like, but I'm leaving. Now they're discussing when Brennan was going on double dates with Cameron and Claire giving this news to Emily. So Mary says that basically that was a confirmation of Emily that Brennan really just has no respect for her. And Mary says she appreciated how much Claire had her back in that moment. But I distinctly, distinctly remember from this reunion that we just covered last week, I heard, and I don't know how much I believe because I did hear, I did hear that Emily at one point didn't like Claire. Don't know if it's true or not, but I'm just saying if that is true, isn't it ironic? And I didn't sing that on purpose. Thank you very much. And then Mary says that Brennan saved Emily's life though. So now we clip back to the clip and the fact that he saved Emily's life. So Sarah says, yes, yes, Brennan, it was you. It wasn't the medical professionals that were at the scene. It wasn't the doctors. It wasn't the plastic surgeon even, <laughs> you know, 
Brennan, Brennan actually did all of that on his own and he saved her life. She owes her life to him. Brennan, once again, shut the hell up. Sarah says the fact that Brennan went to the hospital with her, that's what saved her. He only stayed for her and this accident, basically. And now we're jumping to the toy store, the adult toy store. Why am I looking orange again? I, I'm not changing the color again, so y'all just gonna have to deal with me looking orange, all right? Mary was saying that she had a tough time with that, and for some reason, I'm really not surprised, Mary. Roll the cringy clip of Chloe and Michael. So Mary says that she felt that Michael and Chloe had good chemistry. And now we're talking about Becca and Austin and how Becca went cold towards the end of the relationship because she's tired of Austin being cold, okay? She's tired of being cold in bed by herself. Of course she went cold. Sarah says that that whole scene was very awkward and she asks Mary if she washes her hands before she puts on someone else's jacket. And keep in mind, they were at a pottery thing. So I personally would wash my hands before touching someone's jacket. But let's see what Mary says. Do you wash your hands before you put on someone else's jacket? No, I can't say that I do, Sarah. Yeah, me neither. So one thing I like about my channel is that I am not always gonna be on the same side as the people on television or all the other YouTubers that are reviewing this show because I have my own mind and I don't, I'm not a follow fashion. I'm at the age where I really just think what I want and if I just go against the grain and it's just really my opinion and it just so happens to go against the grain, it is what it is. It is what it is. But in this instance, Mary says that she wouldn't wash her hands, but she was literally using pottery. So you would just go pick up somebody's jacket and just get freaking clay all over it. Chow. Anyway, y'all know how clothes is when you ruin a shirt. You can't get that shirt back. I got a hole in the shirt. Y'all all, for those of you that have been on my channel, know I've had this shirt a million years and I've worn it in many videos. I can't replace this shirt. With, yeah, I could buy it, but it ain't going to be the same type. We disagree there. She should have washed her hands. I understand it's cold. Wash your hands with some hot water. Am I the only one who washed my hand with hot water? Anyway, don't judge. But Mary's saying the fact that Austin called Becca out for putting her clayed up hands all over his jacket was weird. I mean, I wouldn't want somebody putting their hands on my jacket. It's not easy to get clothes back, y'all. Sometimes you buy a jacket this year, you, you can't get it back. It's gone. They're not making it no more. Okay. I mean, he's allowed to not want his stuff to get dirty. I'm, I just, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Whoever don't agree with me, but wash your freaking hands. I mean, you know, we are over here doing some ghost like material ghost as in the movie and you got clay all over your hands. Why would you touch his coat? I don't care what conversation you were having. I don't care how cold you were. Why didn't you grab for your own jacket? You didn't have your own jacket. Okay. Then you should stay cold then. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Now we're talking about when Becca found out that Austin went out with the producer. So well, Mary's saying she could have just basically spit nails because Austin was lying to Becca's face at that group gathering. And, you know, here Becca is saying, Go pick me. Choose me. Love me. So now the ladies are talking about the fact that Austin and Becca just had decision day and he's over here gallivanting with the producer and then has the nerve to say to Becca, you know, you, you've been known to be pretty emotional. What reason would she have not to be emotional? That's what I say. That's what the ladies say. And I'm just realizing I'm not on camera, but I will be back on camera in the next scene. Good grief. So now they're talking about Becca and Austin choosing to stay married on decision day. And then it totally flipping in this scene right here. There might be a bridge in the future, but like I need to heal and learn to trust myself and my intuition again. And now we're gonna talk about Chloe and Michael's decision day. And Sarah says she really had high hopes for them. I did too. And then things just took a dramatic turn. Sarah is over here saying that Chloe's been a champ through this whole thing. Chloe's been a liar through this whole thing. That's my opinion. There are some parts where they are being funny, where they're just being themselves funny, not fake funny. And they're in here and they're talking about how Michael said no. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but Sarah's facial expression is cracking me up. And Sarah is like, yeah, it's fine. She's acting as though she's Chloe. She's like, you know, I watched you take baths. I've wasted all these weeks, you know. She says, 
you know, I was just second place. I was a runner up. And then I say yes and you say no, you know, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Oh, now they're talking about the many facial expressions of Emily. And I still want to, I don't know if I'm going to still do it, y'all, because it's going to take a lot of freaking time for me. But I really like, they said like so many daggone times. I wanted to do a video of all the times they said like, but it's becoming a gargantuan task. Okay, so I may or may not do it. If you see it, you'd be surprised, okay? Anyway, so Sarah says that Orion's fake attempts, I say fake, she didn't, I did. His fake attempts at wanting to make a friendship with Lauren were the most frustrating things that she's ever had to witness. I have to apologize a little bit for what I said at the top of my video because sometimes these ladies do have a little personality and I mean a little, and sometimes they are genuinely funny, but Mary is cracking me up and Mary is very similar to me when she says, you got one time, one time to play with me, and then you're cut off. Me and Mary, we're right here. We're, we're literally right here. Sarah says that in this season, the men came up very short in the maturity and communication department. And Mary says, although we've had some blow ups this season, you know, now we're doing clips of Claire and Cameron because, you know, they had to throw that in at the end. I just, I don't know how much more I have left in me to finish this. All right, so they're talking about, the, and they showed the clips of Cameron and all his issues where he had an issue on the honeymoon where he had to go to the doctor and he had an issue with his heart. And for some reason, Sarah's bringing up, you know, the heart issue, that situation made it hard for him to be filming. And who cares? Because at that point, they were split up. Do you guys even watch the show? Now I'm questioning if you guys even watch the show. You said Chloe was a likable, nice young lady. Did you watch the show? And you're saying that Cameron's funny and he's interested and he not. Yeah, Cameron was entertaining was the word that Mary used. And now you're saying that due to Cameron's health issues that put a wrench in the situation, you do realize they were broken up way before then. Anyway, you know what, Lifetime, I'm going to need you to get on YouTube, find some real YouTubers that actually watch the show like myself that has something to say so that we can be on these shows and talk about the real stuff and uh, you know, actually know what the hell we're talking about. And now we're at decision day again for the second darn time. This has just been a lot for me. I'm telling you, this is the first Married at First Sight season I've ever re recapped and reviewed y'all. And I gotta say, I don't know if I'm gonna do it again because it was a lot of anxiety. I'm just kidding. But it was a lot of stress and annoyance. We're here talking about in this clip Cameron talking about what type of woman he wanted and he wanted tall and slender. Okay, you she's not tall, but Claire's definitely slim. So I don't get it. There was some discrepancy between the words slender and Mary says, well, regardless of that, these women were beautiful inside out. Again, Mary, did you watch parts one and two of the reunion? Or did you just completely miss that? They're wonderful inside and out. And now they're talking about that corny boudoir suite um, shoot. I meant to say shoot. That corny boudoir photo shoot that they all did that I skipped right the hell over because I ain't trying to get... I get, I get very little uh, views on my channel already. So adding some booty and some boobs was not going to help, okay? Mary says that was a great photo shoot celebrating all shapes and sizes. And that's great. But that wasn't the forum for their little half-naked button neck... I can't even say it. Can't even say it. Gotta watch what I say on this damn channel. You know, I don't know what words be triggering YouTube, but I just gotta watch it. Yeah, that wasn't necessary for freaking Married at First Sight. Mary says that this season was her favorite season for a lot of reasons. First of all, this was the worst season I ever seen in my life, and I can give you a few reasons. The women and the men in Denver obviously are lacking because this was freaking terrible. Now, initially, I didn't dislike Lauren. But uh, I didn't like her at the reunion. I didn't like any of the women at the reunion. And even Chloe, who wanted to be separate, she got a separate dressing room for what? That is weird. Okay, fine, you didn't want to wear pink, but you're also in a separate dressing room. Who was responsible for that? I hated this season. Mary, that's one thing we are not going to agree on. I'm done with this recap. I cannot believe I did this recap. I'm never doing a recap like this again. I'm so sorry. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.